Osteoclasts are bone cells that break down bone. Parathyroid hormone stimulates osteoclasts, which accelerate the breakdown of bone. Parathyroid hormone is secreted during aerobic exercise. So why is it said that exercise is good for bone health, yet exercise leads to an increase in parathyroid hormone in circulation? The key to understanding how parathyroid hormone affects bone mineral density is to understand that what the body is directly regulating is the amount of calcium in the blood. Calcium is taken out of the bone to increase the amount of calcium in the blood. Calcium that is normally circulating in the blood is able to bind receptors on the parathyroid gland, which blocks the production of parathyroid hormone. When calcium levels drop, as can occur during exercise, there is less calcium available to bind these receptors. As a result, parathyroid hormone is secreted into the blood to increase calcium levels. Parathyroid hormone increases blood calcium levels three ways. One, by increasing calcium absorption from the digestive tract into the bloodstream. Two, by increasing the reabsorption of calcium in the kidneys. And three, by increasing the activity of osteoclasts to break down bone. Bone is made up of over 80% calcium phosphate. Osteoclasts secrete acids that break the calcium phosphate bond. The newly free calcium begins circulating in the blood. This increases blood calcium levels, which binds the receptors on the parathyroid gland and blocks the production of parathyroid hormone. However, sometimes parathyroid hormone has been shown to increase during exercise even if there is no drop in blood calcium and calcium levels remain constant. What causes the increase in parathyroid hormone secretion during exercise? First, higher intensity aerobic exercise and long duration aerobic exercise are both linked to an increase in blood lactate and a decrease in pH of the blood. The increase in blood lactate and the drop in blood pH are both able to stimulate the secretion of parathyroid hormone. Additionally, there exists an inverse relationship between vitamin D and parathyroid hormone, meaning that, similar to calcium, the lower circulating levels of vitamin D are in the blood, the greater the secretion of parathyroid hormone. So, how can exercise be beneficial for bone health if exercise can stimulate secretion of parathyroid hormone? While parathyroid hormone levels may rise during exercise, studies have shown that, at rest, there is an inverse relationship between aerobic fitness and parathyroid hormone levels. This means that the higher an individual's aerobic fitness is, the less bones are exposed to parathyroid hormone at rest. But does exercise help build bone? Building bone is dependent on a group of bone cells known as osteoblasts. When osteoblasts produce bone at a greater rate than the rate at which osteoclasts break down bone, bone growth occurs. If osteoblasts produce bone at the same rate osteoclasts break down bone, bone mineral density is maintained, meaning neither growth or loss occurs. Considering osteoclasts will break down bone to maintain blood calcium levels, exercise must stimulate osteoblasts to produce bone at the same rate osteoclasts break down bone for bone mineral density to be maintained. Some studies have shown a possible link between recovery after exercise and a rise in circulating calcitonin levels. The hormone calcitonin has the opposite effect of parathyroid hormone and works to decrease blood calcium levels and calcitonin inhibits osteoclasts from breaking down bone. Calcitonin increases reabsorption of calcium from the kidneys, but unlike parathyroid hormone, calcitonin also increases reabsorption of phosphate, increasing calcium and phosphate availability for bone growth. Yet calcitonin secretion cannot by itself cause bones to grow. When bone growth occurs, osteoblasts deposit calcium phosphate bonded together, which is known as hydroxyapatite, to form bone. So does exercise stimulate bone growth? For exercise to stimulate bone growth, it would mean that exercise must stimulate osteoblasts at a greater rate than parathyroid hormone stimulate osteoclasts to break down bone. When bone is exposed to mechanical vibrations from bearing a load such as during exercise, the mechanical vibrations are able to reach bone stem cells. The vibrations from bone loading during exercise are detected by a protein that is also found in muscle known as actin. When actin in bone stem cells detects the vibration, it sends signals from the outside of the cell where the vibration occurred through the actin to the nucleus. This turns on genes for the bone stem cells to become osteoblasts. The greater the mechanical vibrations from exercise are, the greater the signaling is to the stem cells to produce more osteoblasts. This increase in the number of osteoblasts will increase bone growth. But does all exercise produce the same magnitude of mechanical vibrations? No. 
Aerobic exercise that results in bearing the greatest load produces the greatest mechanical vibrations. For example, tennis, jogging, and basketball all create much greater mechanical vibrations than swimming and cycling do. When greater load-bearing aerobic exercises are coupled with weightlifting exercises, such as push-ups or leg press exercises, the greatest stimulus for bone growth occurs. But what about other forms of aerobic exercise, such as swimming and cycling? Is there any benefit to bone even though these are not as load-bearing? First, bone tissue can also experience bone loss due to a condition known as osteoporosis. Some of the means by which osteoporosis causes bone loss is not because of osteoclasts. For example, apoptosis is the programmed death of cells. Apoptosis has been shown to occur in osteoblasts and healthy bone cells known as osteocytes as the result of bed rest or long-term disuse, such as occurs from an inactive lifestyle. Thus, some bone loss is directly related to a lack of physical activity. Additionally, chronic inflammation, which is common in the elderly, has been linked to osteoblast apoptosis. This results in fewer bone cells and fewer osteoblasts to produce bone. However, aerobic exercise training has been linked to an increase in the protein irisin, which blocks apoptosis in bone cells. Additionally, long-term aerobic exercise is linked to reduced inflammation through increased circulating levels of anti-inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin-10 and a reduction in pro-inflammatory cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha or TNF-alpha. Lastly, some studies have shown a positive correlation between bone mineral density and VO2 max, meaning the higher someone's aerobic fitness is, the greater the individual's bone mineral density is. The benefits of aerobic exercise training counteract many effects that lead to osteoporosis. How well exercise stimulates bone growth will vary depending on how great a mechanical vibration the exercise produces. But the benefits of any form of aerobic exercise can contribute to bone maintenance and prevention of osteoporosis. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel for the latest video on the science of human physiology.